Hello Epic 7 and happy Mola Monday, and boy do we have a haul of trials this week. For those of you who need the Nilgal Dagger Sakar mission, I'm sorry man, it'll be back in a month or two. But if you really, really, really want to do it, this is the only way I figured out how to do it. You see, Smallgate gave us some really unethical conditions this time around. It's like they specifically said, hey, we don't want anybody to get Dagger Sakar this time around. But as you can see by the score, I was able to pull it off with a very, very custom team of very specific units built a very specific way with extreme turn order. Let's get into the mechanics. First, dual attacks are turned off. Like, they just don't work at all. Even if the unit guarantees a dual attack, you can't dual attack. If that wasn't bad enough, you can't have rangers on the team. You have a ranger on the team, you take 50% more damage, and Nilgal already spams incredible damage. Now, the hero in the back row, if that hero has a speed buff, it'll activate their S1 after you use any other skill. So you basically get an extra S1 attack from just the hero in the back row when they have a speed buff. And mage heroes are granted an additional 30% attack, 20% defense, and 20% health. So mages are a little tankier and hit a little harder. There are three things missing from Nilgal. What makes Nilgal an easy dagger scar run is first of all, dual attacks are key to racking up a high score. We need to get to 10 million points here. Second, there's usually some mechanic for bonus damage. You know, put a attack down on the unit for 70% more damage. That doesn't exist here. And third is the, the bonus mechanic, like this extra attack with a speed buff thing, usually applies to the whole team, but they're only applying it to the back row unit. That combination of missing the three elements that allows high scores are either gone or nerfed, that makes getting Daggers' card this time around with Nilgal very, very hard. If somebody can come up with a better team, I really want you to post it in the comments section. But here is my team. That's right, we're going to try to ER cheese this because Nilgao is so loaded with poisons and detonating poisons that there's just no way to survive this without a Soul Weaver and non-attack skills are punished. So I built the strongest rage set Carmen Rose I could build. Carmen Rose is unique in that she gives herself an attack buff she gives herself a speed buff, and she does decrease speed on the enemy. That's huge. Also a CR pushback. And her S1 heals. She's got lifesteal buried in her S1. That triple combination on all being two turn cooldown skills lets her just rotate those skills nonstop and makes her perfect for this. I know a lot of people are gushing about Sid, but unless you're going to build your Sid on lifesteal, I'm not sure he's going to work out. 85% crit chance is the goal. I'm living dangerously at 84% crit chance, and I've got 60% effect resistance. Keep that number in mind. It's important. I put her on the Cruel Mischief artifact. You can also use Caladra. It's the same damage bonus. Cruel Mischief is ever so slightly more attack on the main stat, but uh, they're basically the same artifact. Uh, Caladra is conditional on debuffs, but you're always going to have debuffs up. Next unit in the team is Christy. Christy is level 5. I pulled her right out of my storage. You can use a max level Christy, that's fine. Just take all of her gear off uh, that doesn't have effect resistance. The goal is to make her die. 277 effect resistance means 138.5% are going to the back row, going to Carmen Rose, and that stays even after Christy dies. That gets my Carmen Rose up to 198.5, not quite perfect, so. We put Crimson Armin on the team just to give a little bit of extra effect resistance. That 12% effect resistance going to all slots, that takes care of Carmen Rose, and now she is at 200% effect resistance. I also put a Fire Surin on the team simply to give a speed buff to, um, to Carmen Rose, because she's only 116 speed. This gets her up to 120. You could also use Fire Shuri for this speed buff, but mind you, Rangers will increase the damage, so you want to make sure he dies quickly. I'm pretty sure when he dies, so does the penalty, but I am not 100%. So go Surin if you can. Now remember when building this team, Artifact ER goes away when the Artifact Holder dies, and Self Imprint ER goes away too. So that 18% Self ER Christy gets, that 9% going to the back row, that stops going to the back row when she's dead. 
Let's talk mechanics here. This skill transfers debuffs back to you and poisons. That's why we need the 200 ER. This skill detonates poisons. If you have even one poison on your Carmen Rose, you're dead. And this skill is the one to watch out for, the Poison Bomb skill. The Poison Bomb skill will send um, a poison onto your unit for every buff that gets cleansed, and it's a guaranteed cleanse. It ignores ER, so we need to make sure that we don't have any buffs on our units when he's getting ready to use this skill. I know that's a lot, but I'll go over it step by step during the fight and explain why this matters. Another thing is non-attack skills advance his S3. You'll notice that the bar is one step closer to Nilgal doing his poison bomb. We'll just go ahead and start chipping away at Nilgal a little bit. Bam! Man, she hits hard. So we can't hit Nilgal anymore with Carmen Rose until all of the other units are dead. Now, I guess if there is one silver lining, it's you don't have to worry about dual attacks bricking your run, because dual attacks are turned off. We attack this uh, egg sack to keep from pushing phase, and we keep chipping away at Nilgal with our three-star waster units until they're dead. I'll fight with all my strength. It's doing about five percent per hit, so we can hit him one or two more times. Hit the egg here, so we don't trigger fit the break phase. One more hit. Whoa, whoa, calm down there. Okay. My DPS C Armin almost blew the whole phase. So now everybody's going to attack the egg sacks until the front row's dead. That got rid of everybody but Christy, and Christy is going to take a poison or the detonation to the face. Bam. Okay. Now. We could just use the S2 here, right? It would give us a speed buff, which would let us go into the next phase, but I want to maximize the damage we do, and every little bit helps. So we're going to go ahead and go around the corner here, and now we can use the S2 to enter the break phase. The S2 entering us into the break phase sets up the tuning properly, because remember, once again, Poison Bomb, every buff it cleanses will turn into a poison, and you can't live that. You will die immediately. So we need to make sure that by the end of this phase, we don't have buffs. But that's a few I'll rounds away. So let's do the S3. We'll get our attack buff up. And because we speed buff, we do an extra attack. Speed buff gives us two attacks off our S1. Now our speed buff's gone, but we can reapply it with the S2. Since it's immediately reapplied, we get the extra attack. We cycle the S3. Nice little rotation we've got going on here. Now watch as every round you take, that completion bar above her Nilgal's head goes a little closer to the right. We're close, but I think we got enough time for another hit. Okay, we're right on the edge. When it's like this, sometimes you get an extra hit, sometimes you don't. I'm not going to risk it. I'm not doing the S3. That way I make sure that we do not detonate. See? No buffs, so no poisons. All we take is the heal block but we're hurt. If we hit Nilgal while we're buffed, we'll see our push him. We won't survive, so we need to waste an attack into the egg so we don't push Nilgal up. Now he hits us, but we have just enough to help to survive it. Now we're going to S2 Nilgal. This will put a slow buff on him, a speed buff on us, and hopefully push Nilgal back. If it does all three of those things, we'll live. Nilgal's pushed back. We get the speed buff. And the reason that matters is we'll cut him, and now we can heal with our S1. So we S1 for our heal. And now we're chilling. We're back to full health. You see how tight this is? It's very, very specific tuning. Now we don't want to use our S3 here because Poison Bomb's ready, and he'll turn all those buffs into poisons, and we can't have that. So the only thing we can do is S1 here. The speed buff goes away. And we're right back where we started again with the... Um, heal block, but Nilgal is only at the 50% mark, so we can go ahead and S2. This will push him back and give us, give him the slow debuff. We did not get the slow, and that's unfortunate. I think we're still okay. I'm not going to hit Nilgal because it'll push him because I'm wearing a debuff, so I've got to hit an egg because without the slow debuff, I don't think we could cut with a put with, with a um with a uh, CR push into him. Okay, but we are able to cut now, so now we can S1, and that will heal us up, and should push up. Didn't quite push phase, but that's okay. We're in a really good spot. 
The effect resistance keeps those eggs from putting poisons on us, it keeps that from putting poison on us, and now we're perfectly tuned to enter the next break phase with an S2. Ready to go. Now we can use the S3 for an attack buff. By the way, there is a 5% chance that this can be a greater attack buff. If you get that, it's a whole lot easier. So now we, uh, we just do the rotation. Now, unfortunately, there is no winning phase three. So we're not worried about our buff situation. We're just running this down and trying to get 10 million before the end of this phase. We got a long way to go, so keep your fingers crossed. So we're at 6.6 .6 million. Now we're at 7 million. We reestablish the speed buff so we can keep our dual attacks flowing. Can we get a greater attack buff, please? 5% chance. Nope. 8.2 million. We're closing in on it. 8.7. 9.1. 9.4. Can we do it? Can we do it? Oh, it's close. Ah, don't you hose me. Okay, sometimes it'll hose you and it won't give you this last hit, but thankfully we got our last hit in, and that is 10 million Dagger Sakar Threshold. And now we just die because those buffs turn into poisons, he detonates the poisons, and you just aren't going to live through this phase using this team. And that's how I got 10 million points. I am sorry, guys. If I come up with a better way to do this, I will let you know. If you come up with a better way to do this, let me know. I'll make a video about it and promote whatever socials you have. Because this is not easy. This is not easy at all. But it's the, uh, it's the Dagger Sakar method I came up with. For those of you who don't need Dagger Sakar, let's talk about a pretty easy full auto triple S plus team. My goal for a triple S plus team, as always, is to use standard builds, to not change anything but artifacts. So this is the team that we're going to run. I want to give a shout out to Tundra No Caps. He uh, gave me the idea for this team. I know we've got Ambitious Tywin in there. If you don't have Ambitious Tywin, you've got to run Achates or some other cleansing Soul Weaver, and you'll have to do it on manual. Uh, it's too inconsistent with just a Soul Weaver doing non-attack skills um, on her own. You'll have to manual it to get the triple S plus. But Ambitious Tywin, my standard RTA Tywin, he is, uh, I changed nothing. In fact, I probably would have been better off if I had put a mitigating artifact like um, Sword of Azera on him, but this worked out okay. Uh, standard RTA Milam, the only difference is I put Kaladra on her for extra damage. Milam's S1 is a heal, and that's part of what makes her good in this, is she can self-heal. Carmen Rose, once again, is great for this because she attack buffs herself, she speed buffs herself, and her S1 is a self-heal. So, her being in the back row, she will consistently get those extra attacks. I gave her Cruel Mischief as an artifact. This team is even more consistent if you change everybody to attack boots except Carmen Rose, so she's the fastest. Mercedes I picked because she's an AoE attack buff, just an extra layer of attack buffs. Again, I put her on Kaladra. If you don't have two Kaladras, you can most certainly use a Symbol of Unity or, or some other damage boosting, damage boosting artifact, even her own artifact. She's just there for extra damage. The main reason I picked her is because if she dies, she'll come back to life. So it's an extra round of hits. The reason for Ambitious Tywin is AoE attacks, he will cleanse one buff. So when Nilgal does the poison bomb, he will cleanse the heal block. And that's important because as long as the heal block is gone, you can live the poisons because the units all self heal. So we just turn everybody's skills on and press auto, and you should be into the break phase very, very quickly. We maintain the debuffs, which helps the rage set on Carmen Rose. Obey me. Two hits from Mercedes. Obey me. And we get two hits from Carmen Rose because of the speed buff. Hopefully, Milam gets around again to throw her Dragon Buster. Two more hits from Carmen Rose. And there's our Dragon Buster right before the end of Phase 1. Die. 
Now you'll notice the poison bomb, although it sticks poisons, nobody is stuck with a heal block. And because we don't have a heal block, we're able to continually heal ourselves with our S1s on Carmen Rose and on Millen. get through this as quickly as possible. There's no poisons on Tywin, so no detonation. Tywin's health is getting a little low because of that Arius. I think Sword of Azera might have been a better pick for him, but we got what we got. Remember, if you are doing this with a Soul Weaver, you do not want to use the S3 except right after Poison Bomb. You want to make sure that you save the cleanse for the Poison Bomb because every time you use a non-attack skill, you push his skill cool down further so he can poison bomb even faster. Another Dragon Buster, we're at 3.2 million. The goal for Triple S Plus is 4.5. There we go. 4.1, 4.4, and there's Triple S plus full auto. All those buffs got turned into poisons, but there's no heal blocks, so we are able to heal ourselves up. Ooh, the detonate on Tywin's gonna hurt. Oh no, Tywin's self-cleansed, so we avoid the detonate. Can we get a defense break? Defense break would be really nice here. Ah, of course not. That's gonna kill Tywin. Nope, he survives. Hanging on by a thread, 218 HP. So again, if you want to make this team more consistent, take the speed boots off of your Tywin and your Mercedes, maybe even your Millum, so that Carmen Rose gets to take even more turns inside the break phase and not be lapped by the other units who aren't doing as much. At very least, take them off of Tywin. Tywin can be base speed and work here. Obey me. Ooh, ouch. It's getting close. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, there we go. I mean, you don't need to complete, right? We were dagger, or we were triple S plus before we left the break phase, but this usually completes. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a pretty safe triple S plus team. 5.9 million, well above the 4.5 million threshold. If you don't have Milam, you can substitute in another mage in her place. Um, Sylvan Sage Vivian works nice, but any mage that... Oh, you know what? Guider Aether would be great for this. Attack buff for the whole team, barriers, healing. He would work well, too. Just find another mage to put in. Heck, you could probably run it without that third mage. I hope this uh, video helps you guys with your Dagger Sakar and or Triple S Plus team. And uh, I got to get back to farming what's left of this hunt buff. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. And don't forget to like and subscribe.